So welcome everyone to the launch of our Sustainable Hospitality Committee 2022. The committee has been going since last year, so it's exactly one year uh, that we launched. And we are thrilled to have a steering committee as you just were intro. So we have Adrian, Alex, Aaron, Catherine, and Inga as vice chairs. And we welcome back Willy Legrand as our academic partner. We also want to welcome Caroline and Renata from GRI who are managing our committee, so thank you. If you wish to join our committee, please message in private chat Renata or Caroline or myself. The committee is, is quite unique insofar that we have uh, stakeholders um, globally, so both owners, lenders, developers, operators, and brands. So it really is a, a very good discussion and you'll see various viewpoints in our monthly or bi-monthly meetings. This was a place I visited 10 years ago when writing a book on sustainable tourism. It's in northern Mozambique in the Karimbas archipelago. It's an amazing, well, it was an amazing hotel there. And then in April 2019, Cyclone Kenneth washed in off the Indian Ocean. And within five to 10 minutes, devastation. That was all there was. The hotel never reopened, the website closed, everything. 10 years work, winning awards, doing everything that is great about what tourism can do to embed in communities. Gone. Within a week or so, I'd launched the Tourism Declares Twitter account and just began to try to sort of ferment some conversations to get people talking about the idea that tourism needed to respond and adopt the same sort of emergency footing and have a plan. As you can see from that first tweet, it wasn't exactly the fastest movement to start. You know, it got eight likes and seven retweets. But over the course of the following, well, till now, Tourism Declares has developed continually as an initiative. In January 2020, we launched as a website, as an initiative with 14 founder signatories, tour operators and other organizations from across the world coming together, declaring a climate emergency, committing to publish a climate action plan for what they will do, committing that that plan would be grounded in the terms of climate science and the need to keep emissions within what, what we keep warming within 1.5 degrees and we would work together that we couldn't compete on climate change we had to share best practice we had to come together so we could get there as fast as possible as a broad um kind of guidance by 2025 it's about making sure we have the plans, the, quip, the commitments, the quantification, the engagement. So when you're looking at it from an industry perspective that everybody's on board with net zero. Um, and then by 2030, which is the Paris Agreement, um, sort of science-based target of 50% uh, reduction in energy by 2030, we need to be looking at pretty much universal use of, of renewables, um, reductions as far as we can uh, and using high quality um, carbon offsetting uh, to to um, mitigate the rest. And then by 2030, really, it's around shifting the focus to the, the residuals. So what are those um, hard to um, hard to eliminate uh, emissions um, and really focusing on the value chain and making real steps to eliminate um, carbon from the value chain. And then by 2040, um, it, it's around, you know, actually getting to, fat, to, to the point where we can have credible claims for net zero for building, um, issues such as embodied carbon, which are really challenging at the moment. We, we, we hope to um, find ways of sort of addressing and quantifying that by that point. Um, and then obviously by 2050, end, end date uh, net zero, uh, achieved.